Hello my beautiful PhD friends. So today we're going to talk about all of the reasons you shouldn't do a PhD. I'm going to try to keep it lighthearted. Not too much of a whinge fest, but here are my six reasons. If you're new to this channel, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification because I would love to share with you everything that I learned about doing a PhD so that you don't make the same mistakes I did. Now let's get on to those six reasons. Okay, doing a PhD is a big decision and I don't think many people really take into account the magnitude or the seriousness of that decision. You know, it's three to four, maybe five years of your life that you are giving up to a project. Um, there are ways of kind of like, you know, not making it crazy. So go check out my latest video, my last one, I think it was about how to do a PhD without going insane. And I think those are the important fundamentals to make sure that uh, you don't go insane while doing your PhD. But ultimately, there's no getting away from the fact that you are giving up a lot of your time, uh, a lot of your life uh, to this project. Now, is it worth it? You know, I'll do a video on that in the future. Um, but here are the reasons that you shouldn't do a PhD if you're thinking of doing one. Um, okay, the first one is all about money. If you are doing a PhD because you're thinking that it will give you access to higher salaries in the future, then you sh probably shouldn't do a PhD. There are a couple of little exceptions in there. Um, essentially, a PhD on average gives someone about 26% of an increase over the, the kind of base level non-PhD um, world. Now, that seems pretty good, right? But when you compare that to just a master's degree, which is 23%, you know, maybe you don't need a PhD for the career you're getting. Maybe you just need a master's and it's so much easier. It's, uh, it's less time and it will put you, you know, very much, itchy eye, it will put you very much in the, uh, in the same ballpark as a PhD. So if you're doing a PhD because of that extra bit of money, then consider it again. Now, there are a couple of little caveats in there. So one of my friends who I did my PhD or my undergraduate with actually, um, he went into the medical field. He was a medical physicist and to access the higher pay scales in his government position, he needed a PhD. Now, I can't remember if that with significant amounts of money, but look at the career that you're heading into and see if you need a higher level of education to access those higher pay scales. Look at the effort versus reward. You know, is it really worth three years of your life, an untold amount of stress um, for like a marginal pay increase? So that is your decision to make. But if you're going with the blanket statement, I have a PhD, therefore I earn more money, you are wrong. The second reason you shouldn't do a PhD is because you are more likely to suffer from anxiety and depression. Now, those are some big ass words. There's some big feelings, um, but ultimately a study found that anxiety and depression in PhD students and academia was getting worse with 36% of PhD students saying that they suffered from anxiety or depression in a nature study. Oh, now that's pretty hardcore, right? Like if you are thinking about going into a PhD and you already have uh, suffered from anxiety and depression, then it will not help in any way. Um, I am fortunate that I never really suffered from any sort of uh, hardcore mental health issues, but I can tell you there were times throughout my PhD and in the postdoc afterwards and in academia afterwards where my, my, my mental health definitely suffered. Um, people are getting more used to talking about this, but the universities really are doing nothing to help. Um, I'm happy for people to put examples of where they are helping, but to be honest with you, the universities care only about two things. One thing really, if I'm being honest, it's money. So if you're not bringing in money as an academic or postdoc, they do not want to know you. Um, and that constant level of anxiety is always bubbling around in the background. 
Um, but yeah, a PhD can increase the amount of anxiety and depression that one feels. And so, oh, one, look at me, I'm so posh. Um, and so, yeah, if you're heading in with uh, those issues already, it is definitely a reason to steer clear of academia and get yourself sorted first with some good mental health advice and a mental health plan before you launch into that PhD. The third reason you shouldn't do a PhD is if you want an academic position. Now, okay, let me back that up. Uh, it sounds a little bit weird, right? So you need a PhD to do uh, any academic positions. However, the likelihood of you getting that PhD uh, to transform or convert into an academic position is very, very low. In most fields, it's 1% or less. Um, I believe that the kind of uh, chemical engineering and uh, geology kind of, anyway, there's a few of them that there are a little bit more, but really you've got to be honest with yourself and say, well, if I get a PhD, there's a 1% chance that I'm going to end up in academia. So. It is great that most people want to end up in academia. I, I, you know, that's probably why people do PhDs. Um, go check out, actually, I did a TEDx talk called The Illusion of Progress. If you type in The Illusion of Progress, I'll see if I can link the video here somewhere, um, or I'll put it in the description. But I did a, a TEDx talk at Flinders University about this exact subject, where I think it's great that PhD students um, want to, you know, maybe aim for academia, but you've got to have a backup plan. And that backup plan has got to get you just as excited as the PhD topic or the idea of becoming an academic. academic. You know, it's like, sure, aim to be the rock star of academia and get that permanent position, but have a fallback plan so that you're not absolutely distressed and distraught when things don't go that way. Because, you know, you have to be honest with yourself. Are you part of that 1%? And if it's a level playing field, then 99% says you are not. Um, and a few stats here, you know, there's an absolute oversupply of PhD students. And there was one university that said for a single 10 year track position, they were receiving anywhere between 100 and 450 applications. Now that just sounds insane to me. Um, and they noted that all of them and pretty much all of them could be in, uh, in that position, as in they have all of the credentials required and they would have been competitive, but there is just a massive oversupply of PhD students. So yes, don't go into a PhD if your only goal is to become an academic. You have to have backup plans. That will make sure you're not sorely disappointed at the end of it all. Okay, number four is do not do a PhD if it is the path of least resistance for you. Now, what I mean about that is that I see a lot of uh, undergraduates get swept up into further education and further sort of academic um, uh, career paths just because it's the path of least resistance. Now, what I mean by that is, okay, look at this. You finish a undergraduate degree and the idea of going into the world is scary, right? The idea of going out, getting a job, doing the nine to five, uh, having a family, buying a house with a white picket fence, you know, like that doesn't, that seems a lot, that seems very adult for a lot of people. So they go, oh, okay, I'm still young. I, you know, I, I back myself, I'm gonna do a master's. And so they do a master's. And then when they're in the master's, they, 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 they're like, oh, okay, I've got a supervisor. They're telling me that I'm awesome. Um, and they've offered me a PhD position. If I get, you know, maybe a higher grade or something, or I get, I graduate my master's or undergraduate with a first. Um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's when this path of least resistance kind of rears its ugly head is because your supervisor, their career progression relies on vacuuming up PhD students to do their research for them and test their ideas. If, if you don't stop at some point and just ask yourself, is this, is, is this what I want? Is this really a thing? Or am I just doing it because it's the easy next step? 
then you probably shouldn't be doing a PhD. You need to go in with your eyes wide open to what it is, where you're heading with it, and having no plan just means you're susceptible to the predatory supervisors who want to sweep you into their Ponzi scheme um, to produce papers for them and give them more academic kudos. So yes, you shouldn't do a PhD if it's the path of least resistance for you. So number five of why you shouldn't do a PhD is for ego reasons. Now, ego is the hardest thing to identify in yourself. And I have spoken to a few people who are like, yeah, I'm doing a PhD just because um, I want the doctor title and I'm clever and I can do it and I want to prove to myself and you know, all of that sort of stuff. But it is not something you should let your ego drive. So I think for me, you know, I was always known as the sciencey one. I backed myself as the clever one. And as soon as I started a PhD or I, I started entering academia deeper and deeper into the layer, um, into the back of the cave to be swallowed whole, um, people were like, oh, you must be clever. And oh, that felt so good for my ego. My ego was like, mm, you are clever. And it was just like this constant kind of like social proof that I'm clever. And you know, I, my ego absolutely loved hearing all of those things. And it just deepened my commitment to doing a PhD or going further with my studies. And it's probably one of the worst reasons to enter it. Um, your ego will tell you all these crazy things and it's that kind of inside voice that you know that you need to prove yourself or that you're you know you're worth you, you're able to do it and you just need to step outside of that and really write down the top three reasons why you're doing a PhD and uh, if it's career progression um, if it's a personal challenge um, rather than I want to prove to the world that I'm clever um, then yeah, that's much better. So don't do a PhD if your ego is screaming at you that you are super clever and the world needs to know. And the sixth reason not to do a PhD is if you are seeking some sort of balance. Now, when you first start a PhD, there can be a tendency from some students to back off the gas Ah, oh, I'm now in my, I've got three, four years to do this thing. That's ages away, but it always catches up with you. And so there is always a time that you need to work hard and you can either work hard and consistent throughout your PhD, you know, this idea of deep work every single day, have one day off, which is great. Um, you certainly need to get closer to that balance, but it can consume your life and that depends on the culture of the lab that you're in. Now in the US, I know it's incredibly competitive. It's super like uh, stressful. People are expected to be in the lab for like six, seven days a week, you know, like 12 hour days. And it's just mental. So if you are doing a PhD because you've seen people in their PhD office sat there on Facebook or Reddit um, and just having, or YouTube and just having an awesome time, then it's probably not a good representation of what a PhD really is. A PhD is needs commitment. It doesn't need brains necessarily, but it needs you to be on board with the process, doing, execution, writing, don't do a PhD if you are seeking good balance in your life. It will consume weekends, evenings, you will have to travel sometimes for conferences um, and you will always be thinking about it during those three years. There are some tools that you can use to make it easier on yourself, but ultimately it is still a little bit of a slog at some point. Um, and so you shouldn't do a PhD if you are seeking the ultimate lifestyle balance. It, really doesn't go hand in hand with it. So one thing I wanna say is that this video can come across as pretty negative, you know, all of the reasons you shouldn't, but uh, I really enjoyed my PhD and I think as long as you flip these on their heads, you know, if, if you take each of those six things and you understand them deeply and what it means, a PhD can be so rewarding. I 
don't regret mine in the slightest. It's opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, I may do a video of why you should do a PhD maybe to counteract the kind of negativity of this one. But um, yeah, you just have to be honest with yourself and um, you have to make sure that you're doing a PhD for the right reasons and not the ones that I've listed above. So let me know in the comments why you enjoyed your PhD or didn't enjoy your PhD or why someone shouldn't do a PhD um, and let's help each other out. So yes, I shall see you in the next video and have a lovely day.